Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the October 22nd, 2020 work session of the Penfield Planning Board. Due to the public health and safety concerns related to COVID-19, this meeting is being conducted remotely pursuant to the governor's executive orders, including Executive Order 202.1, which suspended certain provisions of the open meetings law. This meeting is being video recorded and is being broadcast live on the Town of Penfield's website, www.penfield.org, and on the Town of Penfield's Government Access Channel 1303. The meeting will also be later transcribed. Lori, would you please call the roll? Lori, can you call I the roll? I can't hear you guys, so I'm hoping you oh. can hear me. We can. Um, yeah, I can't hear anything on Zoom either. Okay, good. It's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pete. The PCTV to mute themselves. That, yeah, that's, that's my laptop up here. Uh, PCTV oh, right us downstairs. Okay. Can you hear us now? Did, yes. There Do I need to repeat the that warning or that uh, legal notice thing? I would. Pete? No. no? Uh, I, well, it, it can't hurt. I mean, I think the only people who didn't hear it were the people on the Zoom call. Oh, all right. Then. Uh, because I think it, it was broadcast out on okay. TV. I'm not going to waste all our uh, attendees' time on that. <laughs> so, Lori, can you please call the roll? I sure can. All right. Hetsky? Hetsky here. Bastion? Bastion here. Knauer? Knauer here. Tidings. Tidings here. Burton. Burton here. Sangster. Sangster here. O'Connor. O'Connor here. Weissar. Weissar here. And Gray here. All right. So we have minutes from October 8th. Yes, we do. Uh, hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to review them, and maybe somebody can then Make a motion to approve. I move to approve. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Bastion and a second by Tidings. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Bastion? Bastion, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. Minutes are approved. Doug, would you like to go through our agenda, starting Alrighty. with our tabled items? So first tabled item is 85 Sovereign Drive. Uh, we have received no updates from Walt. Uh, we know he's working on other projects to get those back before the town. So uh, just continue to wait. If you guys would like, you can take no action on it. OK, we will uh, let the record show we're taking no action on tabled item one, Sovereign 85 Sovereign Drive. All right, the second. Uh, Tabled item is 3090 Atlantic Avenue, the five lot subdivision on the corner of Atlantic and Jackson. Uh, we have been in communication with the engineer on this. Um, he is currently working on revised plan, specifically the fire marshal uh, had a comment as it related to lot two and its distance from a fire hydrant. Uh, and he is working on and has applied for variances, two variances from the zoning board regarding the accessory structure that exists on the site. Okay. Um, so, so at this we're time, on... we're still waiting on revised plans, see how he's going to address the comments that the board had at the public hearing on the 8th, as well as staff's comments from PRC. All right. So, so Doug, uh, did, you, uh, did you share with the engineer um, the comment from the public about uh, relocating the temporary uh, yes. stockpile? Yes. I, I believe he is going to be incorporating that into the plans uh, okay. to show both um, uh, if it were to develop all as one, where they would put a uh, topsoil stockpile, and if they were to develop individually, where he would put it, and ideally putting it behind where the behind, home site's yeah. going to go. Yeah, I think that's what so, they're looking for. Yeah. Um, he, he'll be incorporating that as part of the revised plans that we'll see, hopefully, here in the next week or two. Okay. okay. So, apart from that, we have no action <coughs> to take on this item either. All right, so we'll let the record show that we're taking no action on item number two. Uh, right. Takes us into our action items. Um, our first action item, 16 and 20 Beachbrook uh, Lane, was withdrawn this morning. The engineer asked that it be uh, withdrawn at this time. It may come back before the board at a later date. 
Okay, so that's withdrawn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, second action item, 1601 Penfield Road, that is Panorama Plaza, um, Harbor Freight, and we have um, Loris Menick from Permit Advisors, David Van Leuvender, did I pronounce that correctly? Uh, yes, that's correct. And uh, Bill Gerhardt. Um, David's with ADA Architects, Bill is with Harbor Freight's Real Estate Division. Uh, Harbor Freight is coming into Panorama Plaza in what? Oops. You guys can, um, I guess you don't unmute your video. You turn on. Turn on what do you do? You turn it on. Turn on the video. Yeah. If you guys want to turn on your video, great. Um, Thanks. Harbor Freight's looking to come in Welcome. to, um, sorry. Uh -oh. Go ahead. <laughs> Harbor Freight's looking to come into Panorama Plaza in what was uh, Party City and um, I believe most of or all of Payless Shoes. Um, they're coming in for um, facade and some site plan modifications. Can bring those up. Um, on the front, it's going to be a mostly a simple facade update with new EFIS uh, and Uh, with a new EFIS uh, wall and new sign. Uh, they have made a sign permit application to the building department for the sign. It does not require a variance. Um, in addition to... Are, are they changing the EFIS, that, that front facade, to make it look like one tenant space instead of two? So uh, that I, I believe covers so. covers that, that way and everything else basically matches what's out there? Yep. Uh, yes, yeah. So that's correct. Um, we're basically there. Uh, there's uh, two tower elements, and we because we are taking uh, the two to the two tenant spaces, we're going to encompass in between those two t existing tower elements. So basically, we're building a new facade in between those tower elements, uh, building a new um, uh, ethos that's going to match the cornice work is going to match. The, uh, basically the tower elements, we're just raising it a little bit higher and projecting, taking out that, in between those two tower elements, we're taking out that uh, sloped standing scene roof uh, canopy and basically we're building a new uh, facade uh, building out uh, to um, project out to those tower elements and, um, and infill in between those elements and that's where we'll be putting the Harbor Freight signage. Okay. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt you, Doug. No, you're fine. Um, so they do have the they they show the materials for that. In addition, they'll be looking to do some minor so site plan modifications. I'll bring up here um, that'll include um, additional handicap ADA spaces, a cart corral, as well as a um, about 400 square foot pad co covered pad. Um, uh, I guess unloading dock or loading zone. Loading dock type. But it'll be flush at grade. It's not a. It's not sunken or or raised. It is. It'll be flat at grade. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any questions or uh, comments yeah, I on this? I have a question. Did, did we get a submittal on the cart corral? Uh, I don't believe so. Um, I don't know, David. Uh, can you fill us in a little bit of what the cart corral is going to be in the parking lot? Uh, yeah, big, our cart corrals are basically uh, our steel pipe uh, type uh, corral. Um, uh, uh, typ typical that you can that you would see like in a, in a Target or. Uh, in that kind of condition. I don't believe it has a uh, canopy over it. Is it uh, vinyl coated pipe? Uh, no, I believe it's just uh, galvanized steel pipe. I believe we could get a, a cut sheet on that and, um, and and present that. Okay. Is that uh, any other 
No, I, I think what they're doing is, is terrific. I mean, it's a, it's a great opportunity to fill some vacant space in the town. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like what they're doing with the facade, um, unifying that space. Um, I mean, that's going to be like an anchor tenant now um, in that strip plaza. So I, right. I think it's terrific. I'm good, thank Any you. Any other comments? I'm, I'm good. Yeah, looks good. <coughs> looks good. I, I, I would like to see them um, use, at, at the very least, a, a, a PVC-coated or a vinyl-coated pipe, something that's less likely to corrode and rust over time. And Is that something that you guys could do? Yeah, we can, we can look at options, uh, other options for that. Okay. I believe that manufacturer has many, uh, many different uh, uh, configurations of that. We can take a look. Okay. So it just lasts longer and look better you know, over the, time. The, the, the plow operators are going to, you know, ding the, the carts ding the pipe and the plow operators ding the pipe and they just, they just end up, you know, corroding and over right. yeah. time. Okay. Somebody. So I just have a question now. Yeah. I want to bring this up. So this plaza is in a floodplain. So my concern with the loading area is, or I have questions on the loading area and the fact of, is, are, is the intent to keep the existing like uh, back wall intact with the uh, man door and then just have like a space with the uh, overhead door to allow for the unloading of the materials it's a good question because uh, yeah, basically um, basically we are building a new uh, opening on the back wall uh, same same back wall uh, doing an overhead door opening and a receiving door opening they are in a new location um, uh, than the existing mm -hmm. we are also installed and, and uh, like like uh, described before, the pad is um, is at grade, and uh, basically we are doing also a metal panel enclosure because of the uh, climate here. Um, for during our loading practices, uh, it's ideal to have an enclosure for for those uh, uh, cold um, uh, uh, winter conditions, and so we have a. Uh, basically, it's a metal panel um, enclosure with a metal panel roof, and uh, and, and the pad the that just encloses the 20 foot by 20 foot pad, mm -hmm. and then the 60 foot extension that is where the uh, truck delivery trailer sits, right. and uh, as the truck is is uh, unloaded uh, from the 20 foot by 20 foot pad. Within the enclosure, uh, Harbor Freight uses a conveyor system that unloads their product from the truck into onto the 20 foot by 20 foot pad, and that conveyor system actually extends into the store. Uh, it turns it, it can turn 90 degrees, so they just um, uh, apply the uh, the product in, in crates and boxes on that conveyor system, and it's rolled down that conveyor into into the store. Okay. Because, uh, you know, with the floodplain, you're not supposed to technically fill in the floodplain. So are you okay? Not that I've ever seen water go up that high, um, but allow water to possibly infiltrate to, into that store or that unloading area. Into the 20 by 20 and space. And the 20 by 20, not into the building because right. the building's pre-existing type of thing, but the loading space is more... Otherwise, we're going to have to probably apply for a floodplain permit and some compensation for the floodplain might have to be looked into. So I guess the question may be, are uh, the metal panels, are they actually walls or are they just sort of screening from right. wind and elements? They may not go all the way to the ground. And if floodwaters rise up to that right. level, uh, is that enclosure, are those metal panels going to keep the water out? Right. Which reduces the amount of flood storage, right? Right. It's, it's a small amount, but again, our <clears throat> code requires uh, any, no filling of the floodplain unless we look at other ways to compensate and, 
you know, upland areas. Well, Mike, the, the state code would require them to Put. obtain, well, they'd have two options, um, either um, uh, follow the uh, flood proofing or flood resistance standard or right. obtain a variance. Right. <clears throat> so, you know, this, this board could conditionally grant, but it would have to be subject to, plus it, that would require, who's, who's the uh, floodplain administrator now? Is, is it you? So it would require you to right. sign off on it too. Correct. Well, is, is, um, is, there, is the option, uh, currently the metal panels do go all the way to ground. If we, if we stop the metal panel uh, uh, some distance away from the ground, uh, so, so it's basically acting how it would, um, would be acting currently as an existing condition, uh, since we are, uh, we are, our intent is to match grade with those, with that, with that concrete pad. Uh, we do slope it a away from the building uh, slightly to, to provide proper drainage for water. Right. If the metal panel is raised so the water can move freely, uh, just like it would as an existing condition, is that a, is, is that an option? Well, before we go there, is it, it's only two sides, right? It's not on the side. west side. Doesn't Cur doesn't Cur close Cur off Cur where the truck backs up. So it, so Cur it's not a. There's no. That's so what I wanted to make sure was. Is that an open area, or does that have like a garage door that closes? So. Um, it just says um, it is an open area on the on the on the side that where the truck is backing up into. Right. That is open. We do put um, strip curtains, uh, vinyl strip curtains, to try and keep some of the uh, elements out as they're loading. No. Um, but, but essentially it is an open. Yeah, so if it, it has one side that's open, then we're not filling the food plane. We don't need to, the walls can go all the way to the ground. I'm not worried about that. It's if we were putting, we were basically having four, a box that we were enclosing all sides. That would be considered um, filling the floodplain. As long as one side's open, we're not filling the floodplain. Excellent. Yes, yeah, the, the one side is open. Then we're, then we're okay. Okay. All right. Somebody want to move to approve this? I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion by Tidings, second by Bastion. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Bastion? Bastion, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Aye. Tidings, aye. All right. So we look forward to uh, smoking deals on tools. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Loris, Dave, and Bill, thank you for joining us. Uh, you're more than welcome to stay. If you'd like to disconnect, that, that's up to you. Uh, I'll be in touch with you guys here shortly uh, with the planning board letter basically stating their, their approval and the conditions. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. All right. Uh, our next action item is sort of, it, it, it doesn't really fit an action item. Um, we were approached uh, last week by RIT and Dan Brock, uh, one of their, uh, an engineer working on their behalf from LaBella Associates. Uh, regarding a concept that they have. Um, they are not seeking any approvals here tonight. Um, they simply want to get a feeling of uh, sort of what the board's idea is and whether they would be supportive of their concept as a whole before they come in with a preliminary final site plan application um, request. So they are, they took possession of the Tate property uh, the Sandman Red Quarry, or Sandman Redmond Sand Quarry, off of Old Penfield Road uh, last year. Um, that property contains a large um, home structure. Um, RET has some interest in modifying their conditional use permit that was granted by the zoning board back in October of 2019 for. Um, their conditional use permit but granted by the zoning board back in 2019. Uh, I will let Dan and Marilyn explain it further um, so you guys 
um, just for you guys. They, they're really looking for just for feedback and uh, where the board's feelings are. Okay. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, as Doug said, my name is Dan Brock from the Bell Associates. I'm joined tonight with uh, Marilyn Schlaer from RIT. Uh, we are here to present our scope to the board and get some feedback as far as uh, how the board feels about the project and also to get some direction on the process that the board would like us to approach uh, and follow through. We met with the town DRC last, uh, last week and presented the drawings that Doug has up on the board. Originally, RAT would like, we presented that they would like to open this up for events to the public. After further conversation with RIT and also taking some of what the town DRC um, members had commented on, we have scaled it back to be utilized by RIT only. As Doug said, the special or the conditional use permit was issued by the zoning board last <laughs> October of 2019, actually. And one of the conditions of, this, of the conditional use permit was that when RIT has more specific plans for the property that they were to come back to the board and put in an application to have the board confirm that their proposed uses match what the special use was originally granted for. So, like I said, originally RIT had expected or was proposing to open this up like a wedding venue to the public. After further consideration, we are now, uh, as Marilyn put, uh, su supplied a letter to the board, it's just going to be used for RIT use. And Marilyn can go into a little further detail, but we no longer want to offer, R18 no longer wants to offer this property as a, a public venue for being rented, uh, for weddings and parties and events. It's strictly going to be held to the items that was restricted in the original conditional use permit, which was educational purposes first and foremost, and then associated uses with R18 for R18 uses only. And Marilyn, uh, if you could go over some of the proposed uses and ideas that you have for this, I think it would help. Yeah, thanks, Dan. So it is going to be an educational facility first and foremost, but we would like to hold meetings and um, some banquets there. We do have some board of trustees members that one of the board of trustees members would like to have his daughter's wedding there. Um, we have alumni events that we would like to have. We'd like to host our alumni to come back and do some fundraising. We have student groups that would like to do summer picnics out there. Um, so those are the types of events that we're looking to host our some parties, some picnics, some the occasional banquet, some larger dinner parties, mostly board related, anything related specifically to RIT. So it has to have some RIT tie. So we didn't want to open it up to the general public because we want to make sure we have control over the property that it doesn't have any impact on the integrity of any of the research that we might be doing on the property or the educational mission. So we'd like to open it up for some events, but RIT centric events. So what we did is, when we met with the DRC, what we've got shown in the overall package that uh, Doug has is everything we know to date of what RIT would like to do on the property. We would like to renovate the building internally to accommodate 200 people, max. Uh, we'd like to add approximately 75 paved parking spaces down as shown on the plan. I know they, we've designated a tent area per some DRC comments. 
also we did take into account that some of the comments from the town staff said that our number one hurdle with the neighbors possibly could be noise, which makes a lot of sense considering this is a residential area. So RAT, looking at the town of Penfield's code, I noticed that the, your cutoff time is usually around 11 p.m. So RIT wants to go one step further and say, you know what, we're not gonna have any gatherings past 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, RIT shuts it down, RIT quote unquote polices it and controls it. This way we're not getting close to the time when neighbors normally like to complain about surrounding properties and large amounts of noise. So, and I do, you know, with the gun club being there, what we'd like to do is for people still to focus on the gun club and not our property. <laughs> so, RET it wants to invest a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort. They really want to take this property and use it for the educational purposes that was presented to the town. So, this is the use they would like to do. If you look at the overall plan, you can see we're also trying to do some erosion control. Mm -hmm. features out there that road is very steep we'd like to put some type of gutter system on there some type of storm water at the top and RIT is also proposing to do some uh, uh, creek stabilization around around Quake creek right now there's two particular areas that the water from the creek runs over and it's eroding quite rapidly so RIT is looking to work with the town and the, and the <coughs> DEC to uh, stabilize those areas in the form of, right now the preliminary idea is to put large boulders down there. It's gotta be something that's gotta be reviewed, designed and approved by the DEC. That's just one aspect. If you go back to the site plan, what you see there is what we know and what RAT is planning on, uh, which you see a garden there uh, for um, sustainable, uh, uh, what, how, uh, Marilyn, how did you say it? From garden to table or? Farm to table. Yeah. yeah. Farm to table. Farm, yes, thank you, farm to table. Uh, so we'd like to, the only improvements down there from the exterior, from the site work is gonna be to limit erosion control, to do a new SWIP for all the disturbed areas from the proposed parking. We're not looking to regrade. There will be a stormwater feature there, most likely some type of pond. Uh, that will have to direct the runoff from the 75 additional paving spaces. We have looked at the fire code and we understand that it's going to be reviewed by the town engineering department and the fire department. Uh, all that is a process and we just wanted to present to the planning board to find out if they are okay with our presentation and our proposed project and does our proposed use as we've described it in Maryland's letter and from tonight's meeting meet the existing conditional use permit or does the board feel it needs to revise that conditional use permit to include any additional information that we will be presenting at the planning board level? Okay, uh, thoughts? So I, I have an, a, a number of thoughts. Um, so the, the first one is, um, not, not that I'm opposed to your plan, but um, I, I fail to see the distinction between allowing an alumni to hold his daughter's wedding there and having it open to the public. Essentially, you'll have potentially up to 200 people coming from the general public. Um, the, the, the other thing that that jumps out at me here is that students would be allowed to hold functions here. So I, I guess what that says to me is perhaps uh, a study might be done about how you provide a measure of safety, particularly when it gets dark. Um, so some, some lighting around the site, around the parking areas, around the roadways, around the proposed tent space, um, potentially some barriers, uh, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be ugly. It could be split rail fence or some kind of barriers. Um, you know, you get 200 students around uh, a body of water on a nice day and it's, uh, it's an invitation to, uh, to enjoy the, the water. So those are the kinds of things that, that uh, 
that jump out at me. Um, you know, that kind of a study that might provide a plan for safety for uh, crowds of that size. And, and also, um, you know, maybe a little better definition of um, how this is going to be used other than there has to be an affiliation to RIT. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan. The thought process was that we didn't want to open it up to just anybody going there at any time. So if we had some affiliation with RIT, whether it was a faculty, a staff, a, a executive level person, that they were sponsoring the event so that we could have some level of control over who was there and who was using it. Our public safety department just like events on campus, our public safety department is notified of every event and they're on hand. So this is just gonna be another extension of our campus that public safety would be on board with making sure that people are off the property by 10 o'clock, that the property is secure, that people aren't doing what they're not supposed to be doing. We do have an RIT member, a staff member who is stationed at the property so there's always somebody there on site um, we don't expect to have large-scale events often where there's a handful of events that may be up to 200 people but there could be a, a student group of 35 people that want to have a picnic out there sure so 35 students you know we can certainly Lighting is one of those things that we had talked about. If we're going to have parking spaces and we need to have ADA compliance, we would certainly like to have additional lighting so that it's safe and secure for, for the people traveling from the parking lot to the structure and back. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, other fencing measures close to the, the lake there, we can look into that, certainly. Yeah, you know, as, as far as... Uh you know, when you might have larger events and smaller events. Um, the, the town has some other facilities where it, it really becomes difficult for the town to, to, to try. So in essence, if, if the town approves it for, you know, up to a certain occupant load, then, you know, the, the town's not going to tell you you can only have it on Tuesdays, uh, you know, in certain months. I mean, you're allowed to have that kind of occupancy. So, um, you know, I mean, we appreciate the fact that some of the events will be much smaller, but, um, you know, we, we, have to, we have to consider it for the, the, the highest and, and most dense use, I guess. Understood. Yeah. So what we would do, uh, it sounds, and, and you can correct me if I'm going in a different direction, but some type of operation management plan uh, study uh, that would propose scenarios, uh, the lighting, uh, safety, everything you mentioned, we could incorporate into that narrative and to be supplied to the board for their review. Some of this, like a lighting plan, would, would be required when you would come back. Yeah, you'd for make preliminary, a preliminary final, final site sure. plan application. Lighting plan is generally something we request um, as yep. part of the application process. Um, so it should be addressed there minimally, um, at least, um, in addition to whatever the board members may request. Mm -hmm. Understood. It can plan, plan with contours and. Yeah, I yes. think that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're being uh, requested to comment on whether we uh, feel that this is something that we would ultimately uh, approve conceptually. And I guess I'd, I'd like to ask the rest of the board if there's any showstoppers here that you see, or uh, is it overall something that be a benefit to the town, a detriment to the town, even Stephen? I think it would be a, 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 a much better use of a terrific piece of property. Yeah, it's an absolutely spectacular <laughs> location. Will, will you let Bill come out there and go fishing? It's, 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 that might be a condition. Uh. <laughs> condition of approval. Yeah. But I just to echo what Jim said, um, 
the constraints you're going to put on the use of this facility, if it's not going to be the general public, it would be a RIT affiliated some, somehow. Would that include any student? Say I'm a student at RIT and I want to have a family reunion there. Would that be allowed? No. No, it would have to be a recognized student organization that has an advisor and that person would be in charge of what the group is doing. So okay. we don't let them have any events without having an advisor that, that manages the, the whole event and make sure that they're following protocols and getting whatever, whatever they're supposed to be doing, the advisor makes sure that the student groups are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So it, it's not going to be open to, hey, I want to have my family reunion there. They won't allow me to do that. It has to have some affiliation, some so, strong affiliation with, with RIT, except when we're talking about the board members, we're a little more lenient with those folks. Okay, so, you know, initially when I heard about this, I'm thinking about, you know, ESL, that was Eastman Savings and Loan, and if you had a great, 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 grandfather that worked at Kodak, you could go become a member of ESL. Um, and you started thinking, all right, everybody in Monroe County and the surrounding counties has some sort of affiliation with RIT. And I think some of the questions uh, were somewhat alluding to that. But Marilyn, I think what you're saying now is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it would be a if a, a group of students wanted to have something here, it'd have to be almost like a recognized student organization. And yes. if I graduated from RIT and I want to have my wedding here, that's really not in the cards unless I'm on the board of trustees. Yeah, it, unless there's some strong affiliation with our development and alumni relations and they, they sponsor the event and there's some tie to the development and alumni relations, some entity on campus. I, I don't think we're just gonna open it up. There's no intent to open it up to just any person that graduated from RIT or happens to work there at the time, but. Okay. Okay, that, that's actually a pretty good clarification. I appreciate that. Uh, you guys have any I'm good with it. Comments? Uh, yep. Sure, RET will keep a lid on it. I'm happy. Yeah. yeah I'm good, good with it. All right. So overall, it sounds like um, we have a, a an overall positive view. So the next step would probably be a sketch plan, which uh, I'd get with Doug and the rest of the staff to to see what all is required with that, but that's um, that's obviously more formal than this. It's open to the public, but it's still a what's considered an informal review. It's not an official application, but this def I would say that this would justify having a sketch plan meeting, and the public is invited to comment on that. And I'm going to say 40 to 50 percent of the time, we get some uh, very good comments from. Uh, members of the public that come in and they bring up something that nobody thought of and is a, is a good idea. Um, so it's a worthwhile exercise for us. And then after that would be your preliminary and final. So would this be a application for site plan approval or are we applying for a revised conditional use permit or an amendment it, to said permit? It would, it would be both and we could handle it at the same time. We would do um, a site plan approval and conditional use approval. Mm -hmm. We can sort of handle those as uh, one as application. Um, we would probably start with a sketch and I can, I'll send you all this, this information. We have our application packets and application materials and requirements yeah. and, and I can send that out to you. Uh, but we can do it as uh, as a site plan it, approval and conditional use approval. Yeah, and the sketch plan okay. is so that, you know, you're not committing to so many funds that you're doing all the fine tuning survey work and uh, engineering studies and all that stuff. It's, uh, it's more involved than what you've shown us, but mm -hmm. not the final uh, submission. 
Would the sketch plan application package need to be submitted uh, by the normal planning board submission dates? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So you'd be looking at October 30th for December. December 10th, I believe. Okay. Would be the next. So, one. oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. So. So the sketch plan is a public hearing. Correct. Uh, if if the project goes past the sketch plan, there is there a vote on a sketch plan, or is it just more of an a, a more formalized version of what we're doing right now? It would be an official, unofficial. They, we get comments in. Do we make another application for final site plan approval? At yeah. That point? So you, typically, what you're doing tonight is. We extremely don't. rare i've been on okay. the board since 1997 and this is maybe the third time if oh, if that well, many you. that people have come in for this normally you would come in for a sketch plan yeah, um, understood. and then we s send you a letter with our thoughts and comments and if it's a terrible plan that letter is discouraging you from moving forward and um, and sometimes it does discourage people, and sometimes it doesn't discourage people from moving forward. And then other times it's uh, just comments on what we think you should look at in the preliminary and final application. So the sketch would be a letter from the board, then you'd move into the preliminary and final application after that. Okay. Great. Right. I'd, I'd like to make one more comment. Um, just some food for thought. Um, you have some of these events. Will you be having uh, live music or, or a DJ at some of these events? Yes, at some of them. And would the music originate inside the building, or are you proposing to have uh, music be generated from within the tent area? Probably would depend. Our initial intent is to take the loft area where the bedroom is and cordon that off so that the general public or whoever is in the event is not able to get up the stairs and to use that for the DJ or, or band area. So we're thinking that it's going to be indoors. Okay. Okay. That, that's okay. easy. All right. Any other questions? questions that we answer you in a way that you expected when you <laughs> came in to yeah. the zoom call I know we, we great we greatly appreciate you uh taking the time to listen to us tonight we we want to be rit's intention is to be absolutely transparent with the town moving forward with everything that goes on in the on site. So as RIT develops that property, the town is part of that. So RIT becomes part of the town. So this was our first step to, with the DRC was our first step. This is our second step to say, we want to do things open and present everything in a way that adheres to town process. As long as we know what the process is, we'll make sure we go through all the applications and meetings that it takes and take all the input from the town and the public seriously and keep this project moving forward. Okay. All right. All right, Dan, I'll Great. follow up with you with application materials for making a sketch plan. Uh, you'll receive an email tomorrow with all that information. Greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for your time. Sure. Thanks for coming in. Thank you yep. all. Have a great evening. Yep. Thank you. You too. Okay. All right. I, I, we don't really need to vote on any of this. It's uh, thanks for your indulgence and time. Yes. Thank and you. Comments. I think it was worthwhile. Anything else on our agenda? That is all I have for uh, you guys tonight. Okay. Uh, with that, then. There being no further business, we will adjourn this meeting and uh, we'll see you all November 12th. 12th. Oh, for that. 
Our public hearing for November was canceled as we have no new applications uh, at this time. So that will be just a work session. Work session on November 12th. All right. Mm -hmm. Great. <coughs> Everybody, uh, be careful out there trick-or-treating. Right. Trick have a good night. <laughs>